Guess what? It's raining. In New England. What an outrage. But because it's raining, that means I don't have to mow my lawn or deal with the weeds that are growing in my lawn or these amazing plants that seem to have taken root in the sidewalk. And instead, I can spend my day inside working on this horn, which I was working on for a few weeks, if you remember. We had everything done except the lead pipe, which doesn't quite fit perfectly. In order to make it fit perfectly, I'm going to have to bend it. Bending tubes is a little bit of a complicated process. I have to anneal the metal first, and that means heating it up to a great degree until it gets softer and easier to bend. If I try to bend it without annealing it, it'll simply crinkle all up. So as I've learned before in my earlier videos, if I heat up metal with my torch without removing all the old solder and the old lacquer, then it burns and it makes a huge mess. So I suppose before I start, I better remove all the things that I can from the lead pipe, including the spit valve, and I'm also going to remove the hand guard, which is simply a piece of brass that's soldered on to the lead pipe where the uh, hand would normally go. Leaves a lot of solder on the floor after I'm all done. Now I learned my lesson in the last video. Before getting a piece of brass red hot, make sure to remove every trace of old solder because the stuff burns and makes black stains all over the brass. So I'm spending a lot of time trying to get every bit of solder off this lead pipe that I can. I've turned the lights down in my workshop so that I can see when the brass starts to turn orange. Looks pretty good this time. Now for any serious bending of metal, usually what the pros do is they fill the tubes with a metal compound that melts at a low temperature. It used to be lead, but nowadays they use a kind of bismuth compound. It's called cerobend, and this is what it looks like after it comes out of the tubes. I melt it out with boiling water and it comes out looking like this. But if you think I'm going to go to all that trouble for just a little bit of bending I have, haha, -ha, not this time. Instead, I'm going to fill up the lead pipe with sand. It's a lot of fun. And the best thing about it is that I get to play in the sand and the sand is 100% tax deductible.
Well, that seems to look pretty good. Is there anybody else out there besides me who thinks it's really critical how far the lead pipe sticks out from the horn? I don't know about you, but I like a lead pipe that doesn't stick too far out from the horn. I like my left hand to be fairly close to my face. And so I tried to bend this lead pipe so that it stuck out seven inches from the edge of the first valve spatula, which is how my other horns have been modified, which I like a lot. Now I'll just dump the sand out of the lead pipe, clean it up, and I'll solder it in place. After soldering the lead pipe on, it's very critical to test to make sure that the joint is airtight. It's also a good idea to wait until the horn cools down a little bit after soldering before doing this operation. So now I think we've put together something that should work pretty much like a French horn should work. Of course, it looks pretty rough and it needs a lot of cleaning up and maybe some fine tuning, but we'll get to that in a future video. In the meantime, 
why not check out some of the other videos on my channel, The Horn Guild, where I have several other videos about my work with this particular horn and also some of my original tunes. Thanks for watching. Please do me a huge favor and subscribe. Thanks.